This video provides easy to follow instructions for you to create this pulley using Onshape. Click below in the video description. Here you will find links to all of the resources you need to complete this project. First, there is a link for a PDF instruction sheet. Click this link and open the project drawings and specifications in a new browser tab. Next, if you don't have an Onshape account, use one of these links to create a free account at the Onshape website. Last, there are links for each of the segments of this video. The video instruction is organized into five segments. In segment one, you will read the engineering drawings. Segment two will establish the design intent. In segment three, you will create the part model using Onshape. Next, you will check the accuracy of your model by checking its mass properties. Last, you will check the design intent by making changes to the model to see if it will update correctly. Now you are ready to begin the project. In this segment, we'll read the engineering drawing for this pulley. Let's start by identifying the views provided in the drawing. First, there is an isometric view showing the pulley as a three-dimensional pictorial. Next, two orthographic views. On the left, a front view. Projected to the right, a right side section view. With a hatched area showing where the material was cut to reveal the interior features. The cutting plane line in the front view shows the location and view direction of the section view. When planning a parametric model, we first need to identify its basic shapes and included features. In the front view, the pulley is shown as round with a concentric center hole. There is a concentric hub projecting out with angled sides. There is a concentric rim on the outer edge. Between the hub and rim is a thinner web area. The web contains a concentric pattern of through holes. The part is symmetrical left to right, with all features concentric to the center. Next, we'll look at the dimensions and notes. First, the dimensions are in millimeters. The outside diameter is 150 millimeters. The center shaft hole has a diameter of 20 millimeters. The outer rim has a width of 25 millimeters. The rim is five millimeters thick. The web has a thickness of 12 millimeters. The center hub has a thickness of 40 millimeters. Its outside diameter is 40 millimeters. Its inside diameter, where the hub meets the web, is 55 millimeters. The holes have a diameter of 20 millimeters. The centers of the six holes are evenly spaced on a circle centerline with a diameter of 87.5 millimeters. The mass units are in kilograms. The material is cast iron. Next, let's establish our design intent. To start, we need to identify any features that might be changed during the design process. First, the outside diameter may need to be changed larger or smaller. Also, the diameter of the web holes may be changed. Next, let's consider the features that should not be changed when the part is revised. When the outside diameter changes, the location of the web holes should remain centered on the web between the hub and the outer rim. The other features should remain unchanged. So how will the pulley behave when it is changed? We should be able to change the diameter of the pulley and change the diameter of the web holes. And the holes should remain centered. And the part will update without errors. Before we model the part in Onshape, let's preview the steps in the modeling process. First, from the drawing, we will identify the profile we will use for the base sketch. In this project, because the part is symmetrical both left and right and top and bottom, we can use a sketch of a quarter section of the part constructed in reference to vertical and horizontal center lines. This will be the base sketch, placed on the right sketch plane. The origin will be placed at the part center. This sketch can be revolved around the horizontal center line to create one half of the pulley. We can then use mirror to add the other side. Next, we will use a sketch to locate and define the web holes. Then use extrude to remove material for one hole. We can then use a circular pattern to place the additional holes, resulting in our completed pulley. So now let's get started in creating the pulley. I have started a new Onshape document and named it Pulley. The workspace units are set to millimeters and the mass is set to kilograms. Start a new sketch and choose the right plane. Use N from the keyboard to view the sketch normal to the screen. Use P on the keyboard to turn off the visibility of the sketch planes. We will start with construction lines to define horizontal and vertical center lines. Click on line and construction, click on the origin to start the line and stretch it horizontal to the right and double click to end. Start again at the origin and stretch the line vertical and double click to end. Let's start with a line that will define the center hole in our section view. Use line from the sketch toolbar. Click to start a line coincident with the vertical center line. 
Stretch the line horizontal to the right and double click to end. Use the dimension tool, click on the line and then click on the horizontal center line. Drag the dimension below center and click. We can now enter the diameter of the hole, which is 20 millimeters. Next, we will establish the outside edge of the pulley. Use a line tool, click coincident to the end of the vertical construction line. Stretch the line horizontal to the right and double click to end. Use the dimension tool, click on the line and then click on the horizontal center line. Drag the dimension below center and click. Enter the outside diameter at 150 millimeters. Use escape to end the dimension. We know that the outside diameter may need to be changed, so let's set it as a variable now. Double click on the diameter and enter hashtag from the keyboard. Click to add a new variable. Enter OD for the name, meaning outside diameter. It is already set at 150, so use the green check to close. Use enter to apply the variable. Notice that the variable has been added to the feature list above sketch one. Let's add some horizontal dimensions. Click on dimension, click on the end of the first line. Then use the vertical center line, enter the total width at 40 millimeters. Do the same for the top line, enter the total distance at 25 millimeters. Now we can roughly sketch the outside face of the pulley. End coincident to the end point of the top line. Now add dimensions. For the outside edge of the hub, this is 40 millimeters. The inside edge of the hub, this is 55 millimeters. The web's total thickness is 12 millimeters. The rim at the top has a thickness of 5 millimeters. Now we need to close the region to be able to use it in a revolve. Use a line to close this edge. This looks good. The region is closed and all the lines are black, fully constrained. Use the green check to close. Now we can use revolve to create half of the pulley. Click on revolve from the feature toolbar. For the sketch region, click the sketch. For the revolve axis, choose the center line. This looks correct. Use the green check to close. Now we can create the other half of the pulley using mirror. Click on mirror on the feature toolbar. This will be a part mirror. We will be adding material. Click on the part to select it. For the mirror plane, use the inside face of the current part. Check the box to merge with all. This looks good. Notice that the halves have been joined and there is just one part in the parts list. Use the green check to close. Now we can set the location and size of one instance of the web holes using a sketch. Start a new sketch, click on the web face of the pulley. Use N to view normal. We will use a construction line to find the whole location. Click on line and then construction. Hover on the origin, moving the mouse up, click coincident and vertical to the top edge of the hub. Now stretch the line vertical and click coincident to the bottom edge of the rim. Good. Now click on center point circle from the sketch toolbar. Hover on the construction line and look for the square midpoint box to light up. Click coincident to the midpoint and draw the circle. Enter the diameter at 20 millimeters. By constraining the circle to the midpoint of this line, the hole will remain centered on the web when the outside diameter of the pulley changes, meeting our design intent. The size of the hole is also one of the parameters that might change, so let's set it as a variable. Double click on the dimension, then use hashtag from the keyboard. Click to create a new variable. Enter the name hole. Its value is already set at 20 millimeters, so use the green check to close. Notice that it has been placed above sketch two on the feature list. Use enter to set the dimension. The sketch is complete. Use the green check to close. We can now use extrude to create one instance of the hole. Click on extrude on the feature toolbar. Click on remove. For the sketch region, click on the sketch. For the end type, choose through all. This looks okay. Use the green check to close. We can now create the whole pattern. Click on circular pattern from the feature toolbar. This will be a feature pattern. For the feature, click on the hole. For the axis of the pattern, click on the center hole of the pulley. For the instance count, enter six. This looks correct. Use the green check to close. The part is now complete. In this segment, we'll check the accuracy of the model by checking its mass properties. 
To check the model, the mass units should be set to kilograms and the material set to cast iron. If the size and shape of your model was completed accurately, the mass should be 1.789 kilograms. Let's look at this process step by step. First, open the document that contains the model of the pulley. Next, check the workspace units and make sure that mass was set to kilograms. Next, set the material to cast iron. Go to the part in the parts list. Right-click and choose Assign Material. In this case, we're searching for cast iron with a density of 6.975. Click to select it. Next, go down to the lower right corner and click on the Display Mass Properties button. When the dialog box opens, click on the part, and the display shows a mass of 1.789 kilograms. If this was your result, then your part is accurate and matches the specifications. If not, we can troubleshoot to locate the sketch or feature that has an error. First, locate the rollback bar in the feature list. Move the rollback bar up to just below mirror one. The mass now reads 1.947 kilograms. If you have an error here, examine sketch one. Now move the rollback bar down to below extrude one. This removes material for one hole. The mass is now 1.921 kilograms. Now move the rollback bar to the end. The mass is now 1.789 kilograms. If you have an error here, examine circular pattern one. You should now have found any errors and your part is accurate to the specifications. In this segment, we will make some revisions to the part and check if our design intent has been applied correctly. We will start by reading the revision drawings to identify the features that will be changed. First, the outside diameter has changed to 175 millimeters. The web hole diameter has increased to 35 millimeters. The locations of the web holes have changed to remain centered on the web between the hub and rim. A 5 millimeters keyway has been added to the center shaft hole. If the part updates correctly, the revised mass should now be 2.03 kilograms. Now we will make the revisions to the pulley. I have opened the on-shape document that contains the part. The dimensional constraints for the outside diameter and web hole diameter were set as variables in the document. Click on the Variable Table button on the right to access them. First, we will change the outside diameter. Double-click on the OD variable and change it to 175 millimeters. And hit Enter to update. I can see that the part updated without errors. Next, change the hole diameter to 35 millimeters. I can see this updates and the holes remain centered on the web. Close the variable table. Last, we will use a sketch to define the keyway slot on the shaft hole. Start a new sketch and click on the face of the hub for the sketch plane. Click on the center point rectangle on the sketch toolbar. Hover on the origin and move the mouse vertical and click coincident to the top of the hole. Hold down the Alt key for Windows or Option key for Mac to force the rectangle tool to draw a square. Enter 5 millimeters for the length. This looked good. Use the green check to close. Click on Extrude on the Feature toolbar. This will be Remove. Click on the sketch. For the end type, choose Through All. This looks right. Use the green check to close. We have now completed the revisions and the part has been updated. There are no errors showing in the feature list. Let's check the mass. The revised mass is 2.03 kilograms. If this was the result you got after revising the pulley, then your part has met the specifications. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, look for more projects at cadvideotutor.com. Also, hit the like or subscribe button. If you have a question, leave a comment.